So Ashes of Creation, I think that they're going to have a beta really, really soon, guys. Like, we're going to be playing Ashes of Creation very fun. Or very soon. Hey, what up, boys? So now that we've had a couple of days to digest this month's <laughs> incredible showcase, I can confirm that what they showed has been the best showcase that we've had in over two whole years. Yes, Holy you've shit. heard me right. I'd even be so bold as to say it was better than the season's preview from early 2022. But wow. Before we get into that, Holy our beautiful shit. patrons Watch the full and stream video. I think I will now. Twitch subs and I would yeah. love for you to grab yourself a Koopa Kola because today I'm going to explain why I believe this stream has been the best so far, talk about some interesting implications, yeah, and why provide is this? some feedback to a few of the presentation points that hopefully you guys agree mm -hmm. with. Now, with all that bollocks out of the way, well, let's begin, shall we? Okay, so as I said in the intro, despite mm -hmm. the topic this month, I personally thought this showcase was the best showcase so far, period. If I'm honest, yeah. I think Intrepid completely misrepresented what this live stream was actually about, because ultimately, the commission part of it was almost completely void. And yeah, that's why over. I didn't watch I it. Because of I thought that, it would be boring. They kind of shot themselves in the foot a little with their reach. Many, many people yeah. were turned off by this month's topic, so they took this opportunity to skip watching it live entirely, which is a huge shame. Personally, I thought this live stream was much more of a dynamic world preview than actually focused on those kill and collect uh -huh. quests. So hopefully going forward, the team will be much more confident in the way that they present themselves. You're dominating the gotcha, genre, bitch. bringing all these systems together, Intrepid. Fucking own it. Put these piece of shit MMOs in their place. And that brings us to the first of our points. What we saw this month was a culmination of all of the traditional Additional systems I will we... say that, like, this does look like a real game. This looks like a real game for real boys. You know, it's no longer a beta. This actually looks pretty good. Had from previous MMOs, it's coming together. together in one neat package, mm -hmm. then governed by Ashes of Creation's unique node system. We had the basic breadcrumbs in the form of those commissions, encouraging players to go out into the world. We had the traditional small-scale narrative stories with the side quest chain. We had the player-driven progressive element of spawning dynamic boss events that changed the area completely in multiple ways. Yep. And then to conclude the whole loop, we had a node progressing up to the next stage and triggering a zone-wide story arc. A genuine, complete gameplay loop that really showed wow. off how dynamic and player-driven Ashes of Creation's world is. What the it's fuck? basically EverQuest, World of Warcraft, Guild Wars 2, and all those fantastic elements from these previous this is MMOs awesome. brought together in one cohesive world. And we're finally starting to see that come together after seven long years of concepts. Bravo. It's crazy to think that, like, the game has come this far. Because I remember whenever I first started watching it it was nothing even remotely close to this oh is the only thing i have to say However, there was one particular part of the stream that I really didn't enjoy, and that's the inclusion of console commands to trigger these events. I uh -huh. get that these large-scale events and story arcs, they're not supposed to be triggered by singular quest completions, but it comes across a little weird and deceptive when you show something happening in the distance triggered by a console command, but then you don't actually go inside said area to prove anything changed. Especially uh -huh. when we're so close to our for two's launch at this point i'd say the hard part well of they're probably not finished with that that's probably the reason why i mean it's a realistic reason it's just they're not ready to show that yet is hooking it up to the node system so when you're yeah. manually triggering it all it does come across as a little worrying are devs mm -hmm. just going to follow large streamers around manually triggering events during alpha 2's launch giving the public the perception that it all works when in reality it's all just scripted bullshit i That's think they probably will do that to be totally honest with you i think that probably will happen and they're, because they're really trying to show the way the game is supposed to work. It's not like it's really a bad thing or anything like that, but they are trying to just show that and then just do that. And that's not really a bad thing. It's not like an awful, like, deceptive thing because they want people to test it in the way that the state that it's in. But that doesn't mean that it's necessarily deceiving the audience. 
how it comes across to us when you're using console commands to trigger yeah, things fine during your an monthly alpha. live streams. But I digress. Aside from that, the whole Because, like, the odds are, like, in order to trigger something like this, you might need, like, 150 people doing quests in the area. Well, you're not realistically going to be able to show that, like, organically. You're going to have to create the situation to occur was amazing. I do have some feedback too, and I think I'll start with the storm. Obviously, the whole atmosphere and look at the storm with the fog, Looks the amazing nice. water physics, and yeah. the general vibe is fantastic. However, the rain itself is a little bit scuffed. It seems like it's attached to the camera for some reason, and because of that, when the camera is moving around fast, like players tend to do in MMOs, the rain actually moves dependent on the camera's direction, causing the rain to do some pretty wacky shit that yeah. doesn't make sense and breaks my immersion pretty damn hard. I think yeah, at it looks kind of weird. The rain was moving upwards due to the way that you're rendering uh, it. So you know, it's a work in progress. Hopefully, you can go back and fix these problems. In addition, the lightning bolts were another uh -huh. fantastic mechanic, adding a lot of dynamic movement and environmental threats to the world, as the lightning was pretty much one-shotting you if you got hit, as it should. However, I'm not really a fan of it hurting the mobs. As these were storm weavers, I found it rather strange that the storm that they were weaving is actually fucking their ass. So I think an interesting change to this would be instead of the lightning strikes damaging the minotaurs, it actually heals them to full and gives them a powerful temporary buff. You know, kind of like they've- I don't really, it's not, it's, I mean, I, it, I think they should have things like that. They should also have it like different effects that like will bring the mobs down on them. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know absorbed the lightning that they've summoned. I think that, no, that, that, the, the point that he's making kind of makes like sense, right? No, it out, does. She's like ready to just stomp on my cock. Do you know what I mean? This would add the dynamic of players trying to pull the minotaurs out of the lightning strikes mm -hmm. should one spawn on top of them and just yeah. improve the general vibe and immersion of the whole area. Mm -hmm. This can, of course, be extended to all weather events, as I feel like the factions that are involved with these changes should gain benefits from their effect, rather yeah. than be subject to the same negatives as the player. Now, moving on, I really enjoyed the narrative element of the side quests. I think mm -hmm. it being presented in a way that feels like Dungeons and Dragons is absolutely genius. I'm pretty confident I mentioned this in my breakdown video, but I would love for these particular narrative parts to be voice acted. I've said before in the past- You do need to have voice acting for the game because like in general, I think that gamers are trained to, if the game doesn't have voice acting, this part of the story isn't important. People just don't want to have to read everything. I'm not a fan people of expect quests it, yeah. themselves being voice acted. I yeah, don't that's think a that's skip, necessary. Exactly. Ultimately, people don't really care about the context of quest text, but giving some disembodied voice mm -hmm. to the narrative part that draws attention to these quest givers out in the world would be extremely mm -hmm. immersive. I think Baldur's Gate 3, being as well received as it did, really helped to show that this Dungeons & Dragons type storytelling adds to a game's overall quality. And as Ashes of Creation is inspired a lot by Dungeons & Dragons, or rather Pathfinder, I think it fits perfectly. Finally, I just want to talk about some UI elements related to the commission boards. I think that the game has evolved in a really good way. Like, after seeing this stuff, like, in the state that it's in now, I really do hope that we're going to be able to play it later on this year. I really, really hope so. Specifically, I understand that the UI is still work in progress and in a functional state. However, I'll give my two cents anyway, because we came up with some interesting ideas for its presentation. Mm -hmm. I'd really enjoy it if the commissions themselves were presented in a way that looks like small wanted posters being pinned on a backboard. You know, kind of like how it looks in the actual game world, but projected onto a UI as well. Maybe giving those little paper posters a, a flicker as you hover over them with your mouse, then marking it with a red accepted stamp when you click it. You pretty oh, much wait, think he's talking about kind of how Final Fantasy, I think, 16 had stuff like that? Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Already started this with the current implementation, and I'm excited to see where you yeah, go with sure. it as all your UI elements move out of that functional state and into the presentable one. Yeah. Overall, a fan fantastic live stream. Not sure why people are calling it filler or saying it was boring. I thought it showed some incredible combat changes, mm -hmm. insane animation strides, immersive world building, and the full gameplay loop of Ashes of Creed. I think that what they really need to do is they need to get this game in players' hands. 
because I think that one of the biggest issues that I've seen happen with video games is that games get made and they don't get made collaboratively with the player base. And then because the game has been designed with something like from the ground up, like for example, Covenants and like uh, Shadowlands or Azurite Armor and BFA, I think that what ends up happening is that there are some times where because like by the time that the game comes out and players are able to see it, it's too far into development for the game developer to actually like adjust based off of what the feedback is. So like my opinion is that I hope that they get this out as soon as possible, because if they don't, I worry that they might be too far along with certain things and then they won't be able to re readjust perfectly but as usual i am just one nerd desperate oh, sorry, people, for a people good need mmo to go to and my opinion means nothing without yours in the comments below players and they, can be I have asked to opinions about certain things that players will... being bad at the game is the nature of the game like so this is a big issue that retail wow has retail wow has a problem because a lot of players like basically the difficulty of the game has outscaled the average player base so like the game is so hard now that like you need a bunch of different add-ons, tools, you need to have played the game for a long time, and it's become so hard, it's unapproachable for new players. So whenever a large majority of your player base is having trouble with content, then that's a problem with the content. It's not like the game being harder is always a good thing. Sometimes that's a bad thing. And that's where, like for example, you have a company like From Software that knows where to actually draw the line with like how to make good content versus bad content with Elden Ring. Because Elden Ring really wasn't that hard, but it wasn't made for people that have done eight different modded runs of Dark Souls 3. It's made for people that want to play the game and enjoy the game. And the problem is, like, once you start developing a game for an audience that already exists, then you start losing the ability for that game to capture a new audience. And I think that's what happened with Retail WoW. And I think that's what happens with a lot of games presented this month and i simply cannot fit all my thoughts into one video therefore i'll be breaking down some discussion related to yep. sharing quest potentials and other community concerns throughout the rest of this month so make sure you subscribe to the channel and come join us over at twitch.tv forward slash darkiverse as we wait for this game that quite literally doesn't exist because it will it will it will guys it will copium Guys, it's gonna it's gonna come out. I it's gonna happen. It's gonna be so good. You just don't understand, guys. You just don't understand. It's gonna be amazing. Let's see if I can find the rest of so this find content. Yeah, yeah. Let me make sure I link you guys the video. I mean, I, I really do hope that Ashes of Creation comes out and it's good, man. I really do. So content made for the worst players will lead to better content. Content that's made, it's not for making it for the worst players. It's for making it accessible to a new player. So it's not about whether a player is good or bad. It's about whether approaching the content takes a degree of context and understanding that is acquired from playing the game for a long period of time. And I think that's one of the issues that games like, for example, Path of Exile, World of Warcraft, I think Fortnite ran into this too, uh, is that the games become incredibly more complex and the metas for the game evolve so much that it alienates the average player. So it's up to the developer to make sure that that doesn't happen and that their game design doesn't reinforce and encourage a further separation between what an average player is and what a good player is. So it's not about making content for good players or bad players. It's about making content that's fun to play and making content that feels good to accomplish things in. It's not about whether, because like for example, there are a lot of games that are very hard and very punishing, but they are good games. Like, I'll give you some examples here. Um, I think that, uh, I think V Rising is pretty hard. Like, especially against some of those bosses, it is. Uh, let's see, what else besides that? Uh, Sekiro, extremely hard game, but it's a very good game. Uh, Remnant, very difficult game if you're playing the high levels, but it's very, very good. Um, let's see. What else do we have here? Are there any more of these? Let me see if I can find any more, if there's any, any good examples of this. Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter is a difficult game to play, but it's successful because it's designed for people that are new to the series. Like, every, you don't have to play the last four Monster Hunter games to get into Monster Hunter and understand what's going on. It's challenging, but it's challenging in a way that's accessible. 
I think there's challenging in a way that's inaccessible and challenging in a way that's inaccessible. And I think that, for example, Path of Exile and I think that World of Warcraft are inaccessible in terms of a lot of the challenges that they present to a new player. And a lot of times you have people that are like, yeah, um, I have no problem with it. Like, it, it's not complicated at all. What are you talking about? And like, you ask them, how long have you been playing? Oh, I've been playing since 2010. Okay, well, you've been playing for almost 15 years. So big surprise, it's not complicated for you. But the issue is that it's very hard for new players to put themselves in the, the shoes of, of like just like a random person, a new player. Or sorry, uh, existing players to put themselves in the shoes of a new player because they just simply don't understand it. And I think that's really what the issue is. Same with MOBA. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Dark Souls for new players is like that. Yeah, Dark Souls is actually extremely accessible and it's easy to understand and everything in the game generally makes sense. And I think that's a big component to it that I would want to talk about is that a lot of the difficulty in some of these games that are inaccessible doesn't make sense and it requires like intrinsic game knowledge rather than just like common sense problem solving. I am very excited for Ashes of Creation whenever it comes out in 55,000 55, uh, years.